Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Witcher 3. We're back on Artskellig. Uh, no more going sailing through the oceans to pick up more places of interest for now. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna continue doing that at another time. Now we're on to doing some actual side quests and um, just general monster slaying slaying fun. Uh, so of course, first things first, we gotta do something here. I've already changed my difficulty level back to normal, so we were on the easiest difficulty last time because I didn't want to deal with all the sirens and drowners just clawing at me on my boat and inside the water, so that's taken care of. And we also have to take care of our inventory here. I switched it up to, you know, the maximum because I didn't want to like go back to town all the time. Uh, we're going to go back to what we were before, which is 170. This is just over double of uh, our base carry weight. Double because, you know, I think we need more carry weight and the 20 extra is because uh, I wanted to hold more than just one set of Witcher gear. So I'm holding two sets. Uh, it's inside Roach right now, but really it's all the same. So, yeah, next up, um, I'm thinking in this episode we're going to start with this quest over here. This is called Abandoned Sawmill. Uh, we need to look for something at this Abandoned Sawmill. Um, yeah, this quest just automatically unlocked when we first fast travel to this place. So let's see what this one is all about. And of course, off screen, I did a lot of crafting and I did a lot of um, selling off of my items that we looted. And look at that. We have a very tidy sum of money right now. Almost 5,000. Can't wait to actually go back to uh, Novograd to craft some more stuff. And uh, we also got a couple of flawless ambers from our explorations. So that will allow us to craft a couple more coin glyphs, uh, but that will come at another time. I'm actually not aware of anyone on Skellige who is able to craft greater runes um, or glyphs. We'll just have to see and find out. Okay, let's so let's see what's going on here. Human bones. Guess they're all that's left of the lumberjacks. Hmm. Definitely something creepy sounding in the distance. Oh, not not even in the distance. That is pretty close. That's a that's a lesson, uh, relatively small one, but a lesson nonetheless. Let's go ahead and apply a blade oil here. Maybe that will help us a little bit. I mean, um, we've certainly gotten way stronger since uh, we took on. Our last lesson, I don't even really know when that was, but it still pays to be a bit more cautious when facing large, difficult en enemies like these. So let's go ahead and do a... Uh, I usually do Veil Oil on, or Rhyme Oil against lessons, but I suppose Flammable Oil would work for this one. Um, oh, actually, we already have 86% Rhyme Oil. Oh, huh, okay. Let's just leave that. Yeah, uh... I, I do realize that at the end of last episode that Royal Griffin was really easy and it wasn't attacking me. That's because we had our difficulty set to the minimum and I forgot to change it back. So yeah, that was easier than normal than what it's supposed to be. But hey, no one really cares, right? And um, I'm feeling like drinking a decoction for this fight. Just for the hell of it. Mm, that one's no good. This one could be pretty good. We're going to go with uh, Draconian Decoction. This will give us some more evasion. Uh, actually, no, no. We're using the Earth Sign set, which doesn't really require a lot of evasion. What about this one? Vigor Region, uh, not really sure what the whole, um, Shadow Form of Spectres is all about. You know what? We probably don't even need to do a potion. Uh, let's just do a, a very generic one, like a Thunderbolt, while meditating. And that should be good. Let's take this thing on. Okay, let's save the game. There it is. Okay, we'll cast a Quinn. Let's get in there. Yeah. I'm a lot more confident in my poise. So I should be able to block some of these attacks. Yeah, like that. And uh, it is chilled right now, so let's go ahead and do a Frostbolt. Oh, maybe it wasn't chilled. Now? Oh. Is it just immune to chill? Probably. What? Lost okay, nerve. let's go and do another one of those. Careful to parry those attacks. Uh, good thing it's not going invisible a whole lot. I mean, it is, it is kind of, but... Oh, and it's chipping away out of my health. Yeah, that sucks. Oh, and that really sucks because I wasn't I wasn't watching my vigor there. Um, it's time to do a White Raffer's decoction. Oh, White Rafford, you have saved my life multiple times. 
Rafford, by the way, is actually a person. Um, he was called... Uh, <laughs> I think he was called Rafford the White. And this potion is named after him because he apparently... Um, he... I think he stopped a, a war between kings that lasted for like five or six years. And uh, in, or, in honor of his achievements, um, they named a potion after him. This is a little bit of uh, Witcher trivia for you guys. And look at that. That potion is so good. It heals me back up to full health like almost immediately. It's, uh, it's actually kind of overpowered if you ask me. Alright. Just a few more hits and we should be good. Uh, this guy actually has a lot of defense. I should have used a Corrosive Oil for this fight. Because it doesn't seem to be very affected by my... Oh my god, what the hell? <laughs> it just flew up into the air. Uh, I was saying, it didn't seem to really be affected by my Rhyme Oil or any kind of freeze. Okay, well, there's that. Uh, I used two potions, but... <laughs> and that was actually kind of cool. That was the very first time when uh, that I was able to fight a Leshen and not have to evade too much. I was able to parry a lot of its blows quite nicely. Now, it did do a lot of damage through my guard, granted, but my poise was never broken. And that's what that, that's what makes um, the Ursine gear just feel so good. You can block attacks, parry, and even though you still take a bit of damage, uh, it um, it maintains your tempo. It you know you, you never you never get thrown off your timing because uh, your poise is broken and you have to, and you stagger backwards. That's yeah, that's always cool. Uh, so that quest complete? Oh, that that quest is just straight up complete now. There was nothing else to it. Huh. Okay. Well, that was a very quick quest, just involving killing a lesson. Let's see what we can do next. Um, okay, so there is a, oh, horse races, hmm, that is indeed something we can do. Yeah, let's do some horse racing. It's been a while since we actually did any kind of horse racing in this game. The last time we did that, of course, was uh, when Cleaver invited us to do the race uh, in Novograd, and that actually earned us quite a lot of money. Oh, here's the letter, let's take a look. You've gone mad if you think that these attacks and ac accidents are our doing. Not a single druid has taken action against you, and none of us wish you harm. Our calling is to care for nature, but not at the price of human lives. In fact, man is also a part of nature, and we are not allowed to do him any deliberate harm. Note, however, that nature is ruled by her own laws, and if she has uh, let you know you are not welcome here, it would be wise to consider a halt to your woodcutting, for your good and for the good of the forest. Hmm. Yes, that is correct. Logging has never been very friendly to nature. As our good friend from um, the chapter of mages, um, Vilgefortz, would say, man and nature are just one, and when you're destroying man, you're destroying nature. <laughs> Obviously not his uh, direct quote, but I'm paraphrasing. Sawmill owner's notes. The Druids are on the warpath, moved from words to deeds. Every morn we come to the mill to find our equipment damaged, destroyed. Last night someone tossed an axe into Vil's door. Folk are scared. I'll talk to the Druids one last time. This must end. Yeah, so this is all pertaining to that lesson that we just killed. Uh, in fact, it's interesting that we didn't have to like read more of these before fighting the lesson. We just had to examine one thing and it just popped out. Lumberjack's letter to his wife. Don't know how long I'll stay here till now. The work was tough for sure, uh, but we earned a decent living. Lately, though, I fear for my life. Something haunts the place at night. It roars and wails. We can't stand it no more. And the wolves, they're always howling. Yesterday, Seamond went to the privy during the night and never returned. Didn't find no body nor tracks. Who knows? Maybe he ran off. I'd rather that that than something worse to have happened. Truth be told, I think about leaving here more and more lately. About going back to you and the young one. I'm no fool. Maybe I could learn another trade and we'd get by somehow. And uh, wow, that letter just gave me a wild hunt axe. <laughs> what a very random thing for the letter to give me. I mean, it could have been like a woodcutter's axe, but no. It gave me a wild hunt axe. What are those in the... F oh, those are Endrigas. I love killing me some Endrigas. Oh shoot. Oh shoot. Um, That wasn't your computer, that was mine. The, uh, the USB sound. Uh, that was the sound of my controller disconnecting, but for some reason I'm still able to use it. <laughs> I'm not complaining. 
Uh, that stench. All right, let's kill us some Endrigas here, shall we? Endriga drone. Nice. I just love being able to parry these things. And really just to shrug off their blows with Quinn. Like it's, it really allows me to make so many more mistakes and not really have to think about the consequences. <laughs> I know it's, it's terrible. It's, it's very not good, uh, not a good type of fighting style, but still, this armor really just allows me to be a lot more complacent. I shouldn't be. I, I really shouldn't. I should still take caution in uh, fighting enemies that deserve my caution. Um, luckily, that toxic liquid that he spews from the back, uh, that effect is completely mitigated by Quinn. It still does a bit of damage, but it doesn't poison me as long as uh, I have any kind of Quinn shield active, which is really cool. Okay, yes. These are good, good crafting materials. Uh, I do have a, an abundance of crafting materials now, by the way. Like, I can really just craft whatever I want. But come on, like 120 hours into a game, it is... Uh, no matter really what kind of mod you install, um, crafting materials are going to be abundant in an open world RPG like this. As long as you just kill things in your way and do your quests, it's very easy to just amass a bunch of stuff. Alright, so this is the quest we're going to- oh look at that! The little quest marker turns into one of those racing checkered flags things. Awesome, so we're going to fast travel to Blandare. Uh, we already read the notice board here, but I wonder if there's anything else, like a person with a side quest? No? Hey lady. What is it you wish? On crate What's shield maiden. Strut? Okay. So nothing here. That's uh, that's fine. Heading over to some horse races. So yeah, the last time we did some horse racing against um, against cleavers. Oh, well, not against, but um, not cleaver. What's he, what's he called? Uh, the king of beggars. Yeah, against his men and uh, Dijkstra's men. Uh, obviously, we won that one. And before that, we actually raced against <laughs> the general of Nilfgaard. Mavran Vorhis himself. And of course, Geralt is still undefeated in terms of horse races. Alright, here we go. Let's get this show on the road. You can do it, Agir! Hold off the mark and never look back! Glad you're here. We're one short of starting the race. You up for it? Absolutely. Sure am. Grab a horse. People, we've a third. Join in bold Sigurd and Fish Breath of Gear will be Geralt of Rivia. Ah, no introduction needed. He is a cultured man, he is. He knows Faster. exactly who Geralt of Rivia is. Okay. I don't know if he knows how good of a rider we are, but... Um, so yeah, here's the thing about horse races, right? As long as I just canter along and I don't gallop, these guys... Okay. They will start to gallop eventually, but for the most part, they will just uh, canter alongside you for a little while at least before they just get tired of it and um, yeah, race on ahead. But that is a trick that you can employ doing any horse race in this game. When Roach runs out of stamina, you can just slow down, and uh, your opponents they will also slow down alongside of you, uh, alongside of you, because obviously in these horse races. You can't just let go of your sprint button and have a roach regenerate all of her stamina um, while on the road. That's something you can do while you're just exploring, but not during horse races. Oh shoot. That was not good. That was... <laughs> yeah, that was definitely not good. Slower. <laughs> I'd make a, I made a right turn, wrong turn by turning right <laughs> at the very, very end. No. But you didn't break no bones either. Not something when you race our folk. Okay, so we're gonna restart this one. I don't know if uh, that one cost us any money. Let's see. Uh, I don't. I don't think it did. Okay, we can do it again. You can do it again. Uh, yeah. Got to remember to stay on track. I mean that that turn was kind of ambiguous. It's just kind of like when I'm looking at my map, it's just there, and then 
it doesn't tell you exactly which way to turn, and plus I was a little distracted um, <laughs> just talking, but this time let's make sure we win and let's not uh, make that wrong turn again. <laughs> I love how there's just the wyvern just flying around, around the uh, racetrack. <laughs> I mean, wyverns are terrifying beasts. Okay, so let's slow down a little bit, let Roach Run, regenerate Roach. a little bit of her stamina, and once we're full, we'll just gallop to the end. Okay, don't make the wrong turn. The right, <laughs> the wrong turn in this case is the right turn. So we gotta turn left at the last one. There we go. And we're done. I don't think that race actually cost me any money. Listen, folk. Our winner is Geralt of Rivia. You've bathed yourself in honor, Witcher, and earned a beautiful prize. Okay, what did I get? 75 crowns. Okay, that's not bad. Do I get anything else? Mastercrafted Calvary Saddle. I want to get rid of that as soon as possible. That thing weighs a lot. Yeah. Nothing to joke at. Um, let's see what else we have around here. What is here in Fearsdale? Uh, Roach is actually back at Fearsdale. <laughs> I didn't even tell her to go there. Uh, we got Contract Dragon and Skellige's Most Wanted. Hmm, okay, and plus a, an additional quest over here. Yeah, we're definitely going to go to Fearsdale and uh, see what's up. But first of all, Roach, I need you back at my side. There you are. Huh, you magical demon horse, you. There will be a quest in the future where Roach would actually um, kind of become a magical demon horse. I can't wait to do that one. That one is so fun. I, miss, I must admit though, uh, even though I've played uh, The Witcher 3 several times, I've only played the Blood and Wine chapter once. Um, so I don't quite remember everything you, you can do in Tucson. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be really fun for me because it's been several years since I played through Blood and Wine. Because I played, I played it when it was first released. And, um, yeah, it's going to be very good because I don't really, really even remember a lot of the events that happened there. Anyway, that's off topic. What does this guy want? Greetings again. See, I had no intention of cheating you. Your coin. You're lucky. Oh, hey. I'm not exactly known for being forgiving. Still, take my advice. Find a new profession. 200 crowns. Week, then, Very nice. Come quest completed, worthy of trust. Awesome. Yeah, so if you remember, this was our wandering merchant slash juggler friend. An itinerant juggler. Hmm, imagine that. Grand those swords. I prefer we trust the axe. <laughs> mm -hmm, yep. Almost every single guard in Skellige will give you that line. Um, wait a minute. Where's the quest with the dragon? Let's see. So, so this one is for Skellige's most wanted. Hmm. Should we do this one? Let's go ahead and do this one instead. We'll do. We'll leave the dragon one for another time. Okay. So these were the group of people. Who, uh, witcher, uh, who were talking about a problem and they want a witcher's help. Let's see what they need. And then what? Then nothing. Never you mind. This here's a job for a witcher. As you wish. What's the problem? A beast. It attacked me. Me and my comrade. We'll gut the fucker. Aye, but not us. The Witcher. Why bother the witch man? Like as not it were a pack of wolves. But they got you so afeard you shat yourself and sore specters. Let me round up a few sturdy lads and we'll... Won't be needed. The Witcher will help, right? You shan't let us down. Don't even know Terrible. what I'm dealing with yet. Dumbest dumps. Okay, 
So, first of all, let's get some introductions out of the way. You from Pharaoh? Come a long way. That just happened. Came to Fearsdale to trade a load of hides from Svorlag. Svorlag? Thought you were from Pharaoh. Svorlag's on speaker Ah, uh, uh, well, you see, first I sailed from Pharaoh to Svorlag. Traded some loot from the continent for heights there, then came here. Pharaoh to Spikarog to Ard Skellig. <laughs> Roundabout journey. I hadn't much choice, had I? A merchant sails where the trade's good, not where it's close at hand. Okay, or a merchant is simply lying. That hunter, could he be right? Maybe it was just wolves. I knows what I saw. Besides, who's he to say? Those drum and blaggards don't know shite from shoelaces. That particular blackguard was wearing on crate colors. Uh, you sure about that? Sure than sure. Ugh, doesn't matter. That lot's not to be trusted either. Monsters attacked me. I need a witcher, not some hunter. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so let's get into some details then. Fine. What's this about? Tell me. Me and my mate were on our way here to Fearsdale with a cart full of hides. Suddenly we heard a screech. Our horse got spooked, started kicking, and then monsters jumped out of the bushes. My mate drew the short straw. They got him first. By some miracle, I managed to get away. What kind of monsters? Nekuks. No doubt about it. What? You know, sharp claws, animal skulls on their heads, attacking swarms. Neckers? Yeah, neckers. Near 20 of them. So will you help? Will you kill the bastards? That road needs to be clear. Aim to travel it again soon. 20 neckers, huh? I can handle that. But first, let's talk about my reward. <sighs> don't know. You lost your transport, so I don't see how you're going to pay me. And I don't work for free. I've coins set aside. I'm sure we'll agree terms. How much would you ask? So I was actually kind of excited now that our haggling rate went up by 25% and this is the first time we'll get to be able to use it. But uh, unfortunately, I know this quest and we won't be able to use it. Um, from what you can see here, I can literally just drag this bar all the way to the end and he's going to agree. A fair price. So, how will it be? Yep, see that? When, when you see something like that, when they agree on the maximum amount that you can get from them, that's gotta like raise some red flags. That's that's not normal. I'll help you. Grand! Knew a witcher wouldn't let me down. Not like some waffly prick from Clan Drumden. Or Clan Drummond. Good luck, Witcher. Fare you well. Wait. Where should I look for you? What? Once I finish, where will I find you? Oh, oh I, I um here. I Meaning in the tavern nearby. I'll await you there. Fine. See ya. Ah, and this is why you should demand payment first. I mean, the game tells me he's a Skelliger, but the dude didn't know Pharaoh from Spikaroog or on Crate from Drummond, so he's kind of suspect. Uh, well, whatever. Clearing monsters, that's our job. It's our calling, whether or not we get paid for it. Okay, that is so not true. <laughs> a Witcher is not lifting a finger to help anyone in need if he's not getting paid. That's, uh, yeah, no one, no one is just doing this out of the kindness of their hearts, not witchers at least. So, um, this is, yeah, this particular quest is not very, very that lore-friendly because we're just going out of our way to do a good deed, even though Geralt has all the suspicions in the world about this guy and his ability to pay up. Okay, well, whatever, it's part of the game, let's do it. The wagon. Need to look around. Uh, okay, sorry about that. I had to answer a pretty urgent call. Okay, let's keep on going. Uh, we gotta take a look at what happened here. Gash is like claw marks in its flanks, but it's also got lockjaw and a warped spine. Like it might have died of tetanus. Tetanus. So not dead through the from the wound, but from an infection? Must be the comrade of the fellow from Pharaoh. Hmm. Odd. Looks like he died of old age, not because a necker ripped him apart. Hmm. Old age? Tetanus? If this situation wasn't any more suspicious. Hmm. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, those oven mitts for gloves. We've seen we've seen those before. What the? Oh, nice close. reflexes, Geralt. Something tells me that was no accident. Better investigate. That's what you call Witcher's lightning fast reflexes. <laughs> Alright, we can't really examine this boulder. And luckily it didn't land right on top of this horse's head or that would have made a really big mess. Okay, let's see. Furrow looks fresh. Boulder must have rolled through here. All the way from up there, seems like. Boulder started here. I think I see some tracks. Oh, by the way, guys, um, this quest we're doing is a DLC. It's uh, it's also a free expansion released by CD Projekt Red um, shortly after The Witcher 3 was released. So if you've only played The Witcher 3 without installing any kind of free DLCs or anything like that, then yeah, you would not have seen this quest. So just in case you were wondering. Necker tracks. Clear prints. Okay, so we're looking at some Neckers, and we can hear some Neckers out there in the distance, but those guys has, have never been a problem for us. Um, are those Neckers? No, those are not Neckers. <laughs> those are Wolves. Well, Wolves haven't been a problem for us either. Oh my god. Ah, shoot. Sorry about that. It was another phone call. Ah, damn it. Okay. Time to kill us some Wolves. Um, <laughs> well... White wolves, but we don't have a problem with these guys. Uh, it seems like it looks like um, so ran enemies are just getting randomly immobilized, and I don't think that's a that's a coincidence. I think the rhyme oil on a on a second um, I guess proc of the of the debuff chill, it actually counts as a separate source. So it's actually like I don't know, is it? Is it the Rhyme Oil or is it something else that's causing the Immobilize? I saw it a couple of times with the Leshen fight too and uh, I just thought it was interesting. Hmm, maybe it's one of our abilities. Let me just quickly go into character here. And this Crippling Strikes from uh, Fast Attack, does it Immobilize? Hmm, no it doesn't. I, I don't really know what it is. It could be It could be something else from like another ability that we have, but it's interesting. As far as I know, we don't have any abilities that immobilize enemies. But hey, <laughs> it's a perk, why not? Okay, so these tracks are gonna lead in here. <laughs> What's going on here? Alright. Looking for a pack of Neckers. Oh hey! Some Endrigas. Alright, I can do Endrigas. Try not to be like too careless with these guys anymore. Uh, these guys are just straight up called Endriga. They're not drones or warriors or anything. <laughs> Alright, gotta try to avoid that tail swipe up there. Because those are deadly. Okay. And they have quite a lot of armor too, we're not doing a lot of damage. Okay, so that's one of them dead. And here's the other one. Oh, here's more. Oh, here, here come the drones. Oh, the workers actually- oh shoot. Okay. Okay, alright guys, relax. I'm just trying to do some Witcher business here, you don't have to get all excited. Okay. Wow, if it weren't for our Earth Sign set, this would have been a really tough fight. Probably would have died because these guys uh, they do break through medium armor boys as far uh, as I, I, re I remember. All right, nice. Oh my god, is that's an Ericus? That is a big, big Ericus. All right, let's see if I can get an Irish strike off on this thing. Make sure I have enough vigor. I guess gonna make you it ran out. Okay. Ow. Oh shoot. I am almost dead. Uh, let's see. Explosive bolts. Where are you? Exploding bolt. Come on. Okay. There's leg injury. There's another one just for good measure. And let's play it more defensively here. Actually, let's go ahead and do a swallow potion because 
Uh, that health is actually getting dangerously low. Okay. While it's burning, let's take this opportunity. Nice. Ericus. Alright. Oh my god. This guy is actually... Oh no, 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 Don't pull me back into the poison block. Okay, good. Uh, I learned that trick from fighting arachnomorphs. I have to block when I'm being pulled in. Okay, that's good. Set it on fire. Nice. It's been a very long time since we fought a proper Ericus. It's always been Endrigus and stuff. Okay. Put these explosive bolts to good use. No, don't shoot at the wall. <laughs> okay. There's another Ig uh, Axie. Let's see if I can get another like really good Iris strike off on this guy. Lost your nerve. Need some vigor. Come on. Oh my God. Seriously. Actually, I'm too afraid to use my Iris here. Uh, oh no! That there it is. That was clean. Oh my God. Ah. <laughs> this guy. Ooh. Alright, so it's, it's very difficult to go up to it to attack. I mean, the moment I attack, it does this really fast claw strike. And uh, that's kind of deadly. Alright, it's dead. Whew. Ericus. Hmm. Definitely behaves differently from Endrigus. Their attacks are about the same. Uh, very fast, like, pincer strikes. But, um... They are... Uh, they are a bit more erratic in terms of their attacking patterns. Huh. It did drop a lot of loot though. Okay, Ericus Mutagen. Very nice. I don't think we've gotten one of those before, but I'm gonna have an educated guess here and uh, say that one gives me toxicity. Uh, there it is. Yeah, plus five toxicity. Because, you know, like, all this guy likes to do is just spew that poison at me and try to poison me. So, toxicity just makes sense in terms of the mutagen that you can give me. Alright, well, that's over. Let's move on. Was there something else? Uh, no, okay. Definitely hear something in the distance there. A necker's foot, hollowed out inside like a boot. Someone lost it while running. The plot thickens. Hmm. <laughs> That's certainly correct. Okay, through this little hole. Oh my god. Anything down here? No. Necker paw and a human foot? Small like a child's. Clearly running. So clearly this little kid put on put on a Necker foot in order to create Necker footprints. Actually reminds me of that time when we met some kids who were using, uh, I think, wolf paws to create wolf tracks <laughs> to steal some old woman's chickens. Trail ends here. <laughs> Who would think to hang drawings in a place like this? Oh, are those drawings of Geralt? Oh, great. It's like the work of a child, or someone who's damned clumsy with a quill. <laughs> Two sticks protruding above the shoulder. Think that might be me. Is that a wagon? And here's where that boulder almost crushed me. Necker tracks near the boulder. Now I know where they came from. Just wonder who actually left them. These balls on sticks are Endrigas. Guess they were supposed to finish me off. All in all, a pretty elaborate plan. And this must be the meeting place. <laughs> Looks like this whole ambush was a group effort. High time I met the pranksters. Okay, this is shaping out to be a very interesting quest. A necker, torn apart by something huge, then someone cut its legs off. 
Hmm. <laughs> we can uh, we can examine these drawings in detail if we wanted to. Cool. Yeah. So Witcher against a bunch of Ericus. I mean, Endrigas and Ericus. And what about this one down here? I don't think I can examine that that one on the floor. All right. Anyways, let's keep going. Oh boy. Oh, here we have some actual Neckers, not just well, pretend how long ones. You make me wait? Uh, I don't even think I need to be defensive at all with these guys. The the Quen Shield will be enough to mitigate all the damage that we were to take. Yeah, so Neckers are just a complete triviality at this point. <laughs> but just for this guy, I'll block one of his attacks. <laughs> Okay, good stuff. I would love to make use of some of this swallow. Uh, okay, so our quest objective is to go to the conspirators meeting spot at night. Ah, we might not be able to make use of this swallow because we have to wait out uh, wait out the night time. Uh, well, in that case, I might as well just fight this bear since uh, we won't be able to make use of our swallow anyway. Oh, that was close. That was very close. All right, four stacks of poisoning already. Look at that. Oh, this bear is not really putting up much of a fight. <laughs> Damn. Ooh, and there we go. actually kind of a ways off. Hmm. I wonder why they would go meet in such a distant place when their hideout was just over here. We shall soon find out. So this quest is called Skellige's Most Wanted. There is a little bit of meaning behind that quest name as we will soon discover. Alright, well, it's not nighttime yet, which means we won't be able to meet these pranksters. But I suppose I just have to wait things out here. Um, wait a minute. Yeah, we'll come over here and wait things out. Just on top of this rock here. Actually, hold on. Um, I should set up a fireplace. Get some of that vitality bonus. Oh, do I not have any wood? Oh, damn it. Roach. <laughs> I know I have some wood inside Roach. I wonder... Wait a minute. I'm sure I had some wood. Maybe I don't. Well, whatever. Forget the vitality bonus then. Uh, let's go to, I don't know, 9 p.m. 6, 8... Ah, uh, 10 p.m. Same difference. Must be the place. You can come out. I've seen your plan. Besides, I can hear you. One of you's wheezing like a broken bellows. Another's panting frantically like a deer caught in a trap. And the third should really take something for that throat. I'd try time extract. Look at that. We got three different creatures going on here. What's going on? Someone care to explain what's going on here? What's going on is that you're down there, a we're up here. That's a situation I can fix quickly. Richie thingy no gum gum. Oh, pounding witchy thingy swoop man. That's right. We've caught you. You're at our mercy now, and we're none too merciful. Oh, really? Fact is, I could just turn around and hold it out. Richie, thingy, gum gum, shucky, wolf, swoop, man. I wonder why he's not already in that shrimp. You were to kill him. <sighs> what? 
We never said nothing about killing. Not a thing. We were just supposed to scare him. So Richie Thingy has scary thingies. Make him no touch us. I believe you misunderstood. <sighs> He's a murderer. Like the rest of them. Like the one who killed my Adalia. <sighs> <clears throat> Awful sorry about your wench. We all are. A doubler. But this Witcher didn't kill her. And we can't very well punish him for another's crime. He has much to answer for, too. <sighs> I heard he killed a Korid in Tucson. But he spared a golden dragon. So what? What about Verena? The Bruxa with the fondness for blue roses from Nazaire. He showed her no mercy. <sighs> so... The, yeah, the werewolf and the, the godling there are recalling different events that happened back in the Witcher books. Um, the Golden Dragon in particular is probably my favorite story among among those ones. Uh, so there's a couple of options here. We can kind of debate with them whether or not I am a good Witcher. I can just say, forget this, you're all dead. Or we can um, kind of try to walk off uh, as if nothing is happening. Uh, because we are the intelligent and um, fair Witcher, we're going to try to argue our way out of this. Arena killed many an innocent. I had to do something, but I've helped monsters aplenty. Yes? Who? Okay, so now is the time, and this is what makes this quest so brilliant. Now is the time that we can actually look back on all of the good deeds we have done for monsters in the past and uh, use those as examples of when Geralt decided to spare certain monsters in his career. And these are all the things we have done. Really, it's just three, um, but three is all we need. I think two is all we need to, um, to get out of this uh, without fighting, without fighting all of them, that is. Uh, this last option, of course, it's it's no good. So this one, Selma, is the succubus that was inside Novigrad. Uh, that's the one we decided to spare. Of course, we did kill a different succubus, Ian Skellige, but they don't have to know that. Selma, a succubus in Novigrad. Let her go free, even though I knew she'd killed some guardsmen. You mean, even when you know a monster's killed someone, you don't hurt them? If it had good reason. Yeah, sometimes. Don't make me laugh. That's not nearly enough. <sighs> okay, then I can uh, I can either do the Doppler or the Godling. Uh, there is both a Doppler and a Godling up there. So, wait a minute. Which Godling is this? Is it Johnny? Hmm. This is a main quest, though. Let's uh, let's do the. Hmm. That's for the Doppler in Novigrad. Yeah, we, we decided to spare that one because, you know, that's just part of the Witcher code. Not so long ago, I spared the life of a Doppler in Novigrad. He was stealing food for the Scoia'tael. Letting him go cost me a hefty bounty. Well, I'm grateful. Not many of us left. You see? He's not that bad. We should let him go. Let him go? No! So he can track us down and butcher us? I won't hurt you. I don't kill sentient creatures. You lie. Every witcher is a murderer. <sighs> I kill monsters, true. It's my job. But only when they threaten humans. You hate us! Hate us all! Humans hate you all. Because they don't know you. Don't know which of you are dangerous and which want to live in peace. Only witchers stand between you and humans. We know both worlds. Protect both. We kill dangerous monsters, so the thinking ones can live in peace. So you say now, as you stand there, scared. You know we have the upper hand. Ha, ha, ha. You don't. Could have killed you all long ago if I'd wanted to. I believe him. We should let him be. I'm all for it. To my thinking, he's telling the truth. Let witchy thingy go. Ah! Fools! Gullible as newborns! 
A just witcher. A kind witcher. A lying witcher. He fiends at all. All humans lie. Let it rest. This is not the way. You shan't bring Adalia back. Rawr! Stay here. I'll finish this alone. <sighs> well, looks like there's no convincing this werewolf. Let's dance. Oops, wrong weapon there, Geralt. That's not the one we need to draw right now. Come on. Um, yes, I do need the silver weapon, but the iris also functions as our silver weapon here. Alright. Let's try to give it an injury. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. Leg injury. That's very nice. Alright, and now let's just feel it out. Ooh, okay. Gave it poison. <laughs> I'm so happy. Pairing these, hit these hits feels so much better than dodging them, honestly. Yeah, so that that parry right there, that would have gone through my poise if I didn't have heavy armor. I, I can tell. Werewolf attacks are nothing to laugh at. Oh, that's it. Executed. I honestly never knew you can even do that to werewolves. That was kind of cool. You were right. Monsters are like men. Some are good, some are bad, and still others simply lost. That's a right shame. I was different once. Should never have let him talk us into this. Here, a little something from us. So you'll remember not all monsters are dangerous. Thanks. Yeah, you know what? Uh, trolls can sometimes um, be very dangerous. They don't even want to talk to you before they just start pounding at you. Uh, Dopplers, like the one we had in Novigrad, that one, um, I guess he attacked me first. He could have been dangerous, but he was a sentient being and he was very smart. Um, uh, so we didn't have to kill him, but godlings, I would never even consider hurting a godling. They are so cute and so nice. The two of them we have already met in this, uh, in this game, Sarah and Johnny. Johnny is just an amazing, like, comical character, and Sarah, she's, ah, uh, still, I'm still thinking about just driving her out, that, out of that house in Novigrad. Um, yeah, if you didn't watch that episode, um, you do remember that, uh, when we were doing the quest with Kareen Tilly, the only way to wake up Kareen is to either have Sarah like stop her little magic that, uh, that's keeping Kareen inside the nightmare, or the other way is to just drive Sarah away. And uh, we chose the latter option because that option actually creates another scene later on in the game, which we're still not yet at. Um, yeah, that, I'll, I'll bring that up again later on when we get to that scene. But uh, yeah, that's the one we chose. But I would never think about killing a godling. That's just, there's just no way. A witcher, that's like killing an innocent human being, innocent human child. Just, <laughs> no way. All right, so we got some werewolf guts here. Um, the mutagen, which is always nice. Okay, and that one is complete. There is Skellige's Most Wanted. Um, yeah, you can see how this could be a, like a DLC quest, which it is. Uh, it's very... It's very unique amongst other quests that you can do in this game. So yeah, that was very nice. Um, we do have a bit more time, so let's actually go ahead and just go back to the palisade there. And we'll go back to Fierce Dao and probably do this quest involving the so-called dragon and see what's up here. Alright. Oh, I heard something. Oh! Huh, speaking of dragon, look at that! That is a wyvern just flying up there. Cool. Don't think it's gonna attack me, and if that's the case, I'm not gonna bother it. But that's pretty cool. Just a wyvern flying up there. Hmm. All right, here we are. Palisade. Probably some kind of a fortress a very long time ago because you can clearly see the moat that's been set up to, to defend it. Mm, whatever happened here back in Skellige, we don't know. I mean, uh, Nilfgaard has yet to really invade Skellige because 
it's very difficult to sail across the ocean with an entire fleet and try to destroy uh, and try to invade Skellige because um, the the folk here they're very good at combat on the water and the you know you got pirates and you have their long ships um, kind of like the Vikings very difficult to deal with uh, okay so where was that where was that quest with the, the dragon there we go We need to. Oh, wait a minute! Wait a minute. Um, where is the? Uh... <laughs> the Skellige's most wanted is not even here anymore. The dude says that he's going to be waiting at the tavern nearby. Uh, is there even a tavern in this town? Let me take a look. I want to see if he's still here. Because he was supposed to pay me 168 crowns. Clearly, that's not going to happen anymore. Yeah, I don't even think there is a tavern in this in this uh, town so yep we were definitely made fools out of in that one but oh yeah I should take a look at this uh, this item that they gave me this is Necker hide boots <laughs> yeah it's not too exciting it's just a unique pair of boots that you can wear uh, resistance to bleeding and yeah some other resistances so yeah there you go it's just a unique skin nothing that we'll really need to wear Okay, so hi there. Oh, a witcher. Here about the dragon, I reckon. I am. <laughs> Farewell. No, I'm here about the dragon, yes. Tell me about this dragon. What's it look like, for instance? You don't know. What kind of monster slayer are ye? It's got scales, wings, claws. A dragon's a dragon. You point, Gavin. Just go kill it, for it makes more corpses. Well, first of all, dragons are sentient, so we were just talking about the Witcher's Code. We don't kill those things, but uh, I can humor you. Let's talk about the reward. Let's talk about the reward. See what you're offering for this dragon. Usually get that much for a necker. <laughs> okay, so 150 crowns. Oh, a little bit of trivia. Uh, Geralt was paid 150 crowns to kill a manticore somewhere in Temeria. So he was trying to get 200 uh, I think the Redanians were trying to, or or Temerians were trying to get a uh, hundred. In the end, they settled for one hundred and fifty. So yeah, I don't think one hundred and fifty is a Necker's um, pay grade, but uh, yeah, it's definitely no dragon's pay. For a dragon, we we're gonna want two hundred and seventy. You're asking a few crowns too many, master. Okay, well we can drop that down a little bit. Let's go two forty-five. It's a lot, but then a dragon's a lot too. So be it. I accept. Okay, let's do it. Witchers don't usually kill dragons, but I'll look into it. You said something about victims, right? Two brothers, Askel and Nilus, went out to hunt, turned into prey. Wounds so horrible, even I went weak in the knees when they brought them in. And I've seen my share of bloody harm. Been on 32 raids, from Povis to the mountains of... Fascinating story, I'm sure, but I'm more interested in these wounds. Can you describe them? Look for yourself. Family's only now preparing the boy's funeral. Their corpses still lie in their home, at the village's northern end. But treat the bodies with respect, mind ye, as tradition demands. Okay, nice. Actually, guys, um, I'm just looking at the clock here, and I know we're not very, we haven't um, been going for an hour just yet. But yeah, those phone calls I got earlier, um, I'm going to have to go out soon and I'm going to need to prepare. So uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to do this dragon contract this time. But uh, yeah, we will be back next time to to do this. And uh, for now, though, I'm sorry I need to end this off, but hope you guys understand. So thanks for watching this time, guys. I'll see you in the next one.